How are we doing? I'm going to need a thumbs up if everything is okay and you can hear me because I'm doing something new this week. Uh, if you're out there and you can hear me, let me know. That would be awesome. I'm not sure if – oh, it would help if I turned my mic on. Can you hear me now? Let me know if anybody can hear me. Hi, Greg. Hi, Ed. How you doing? Thumbs up. Great. Does that mean you can hear me? How does everything look and sound? Am I loud enough? And am I clear enough? I'll tell you what I'm doing differently. Um, I am using Ecamm Live this time. I'm not using OBS. So I'm hoping it's working. Uh, Greg Hyatt says, hi, I'm good, Rob. Thanks for asking. Looks good and sounds good. Slight echo. Okay, thanks for letting me know. I know why that probably is. I have to turn my audio off. Um, let me know if that sounds any better. Um, Pamela Powers says, okay, sounds good. Um, we're going to try something here. Uh, let's see if this works. Uh, there we go. So I just put a message up on screen. Greg's message says, I'm good, Rob. Thanks for asking. Um, that appears okay. <laughs> it looks like it does. Uh, and also I think, so it's got your name and it's got your, uh, your avatar as well. Um, so that, uh, that looks like it works. Pamela Powers, welcome. Thanks for coming back to another live stream. That's great. <clears throat> uh, so how's everybody doing? So it's been a week since I've been on live and a couple of new things. Um, as I say, I am now streaming through Ecamm Live uh, and uh, not OBS this week. Um, nothing against OBS. I'm trying something new. Actually, the, the main reason I wanted to try this is the on-screen on screen messages that you can do very easily with Ecamm. So I have it on my uh, MacBook over here to the side, uh, and I can uh, uh, display messages as you guys send them in, um, just like that. And uh, let me just try to type a message here. Oh, wait now. I think that might be uh, – no, no, that's good. Um, let me see here, uh, quick message from me. Okay. That, uh, takes a little bit of time. I typed that into YouTube. Okay. It takes a little bit of time before it pops up here and then I can display it. Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm getting used to this Ecamm thing as as I speak here. So I'm <laughs> going to have to bear with me a little bit. So, um, yes. Uh, what is new? Uh, Greg just said eclipse was great yesterday, expecting some tornadoes this evening. So chase time this evening will be exciting. <laughs> Very good. Uh, you must be in the Southern States perhaps, or middle of the United States. Um, I'm in East Coast Canada. We don't get many tornadoes here, but I saw the eclipse. Well, we were 94% coverage where we are here in Nova Scotia. The eclipse passed a little bit north of us uh, here in Nova Scotia. Um, so, uh, yeah, Greg says, I am. I am in Arkansas. Very nice. Very nice. I was in uh, Louisiana a few months ago to see a football game in New Orleans. Um, Kind of close to, to uh, Arkansas, I suppose. Uh, and Greg also says Ecamm is good. Awesome. Uh, I've heard lots of good things about it. I used StreamYard in the past, um, uh, and uh, that was a web-based uh, uh, app uh, or program, and, and I liked that as well. Um, and uh, it also had the ability to put uh, things on screen. So now that I have a Mac, I'm going to try Ecamm, which is only for Macs. Um, and, uh, we'll see how that goes. So, uh, I signed up, I, I literally, uh, put in my credit card like an hour ago <laughs> to, uh, to launch the pro features and actually to get rid of the Ecamm live logo that would have been on screen here when I went live. So I didn't want that. So I paid them the, uh, 
the 20 bucks for the first month and then we'll see how it goes. Um, so uh, Greg says, don't much care for StreamYard or Streamlabs as much. I, I lean on OBS since I'm PC based. Ah, very good. Yeah. Uh, and I've been using OBS a lot lately, not just for streaming, but uh, that's actually how I get a lot of my screen captures. Um, instead of using the native uh, uh, screen capture in Camtasia, uh, which I have done a lot of in the past, but lately I've been just screen recording with OBS and I just find with my workflow, it seems to work, uh, work a little bit better. Um, so that's what I've been doing lately. Uh, so yeah. So, uh, since last week, um, what's new since last week? So last week, so I've got a little, uh, so again, I don't have my, my stream deck set up yet for Ecamm. So anything that uh, is displayed on screen, I actually have to use my mouse and click to display it or not display it. Um, so, uh, like the, the messages, for instance, I can turn them off with a click of a button. Uh, the, uh, the overlay over here that has the uh, table of contents for today. Um, I'm going to have that mapped to my stream. I just ran out of time. I'll have that mapped to my stream deck for next week. Um, so yeah, so brief overview of last week. So last week we had a great, uh, it was almost two hours, uh, live and I went through, um, custom Camtasia transition, uh, I went through oh, how to create the custom transition that I use in my videos towards the end when I kind of slide myself over to the side and I have like kind of moving uh, transitions and whatnot. So I kind of talked about that and how to do that. Uh, and I'm going to make a video on that as well to, to release to YouTube. Um, and we went through YouTube thumbnails and how I create mine uh, in Canva. So that was kind of cool. Um, and again, let me know if you guys want to see any more uh, of Anything I've shown or anything I haven't shown yet that you'd like to see more of, just let me know. Uh, I'll add it to my list. I've got a growing list of things that I want to cover. Um, so that list starts with me coming up with things that I think you guys want me to cover. <laughs> but ultimately, it's really up to you guys. So it would kind of suck for me to make a video or do a live stream on something that you really don't care about. <laughs> so uh, feel free to let me know what you want to see, and I will kind of tailor my program here and uh, the upcoming videos to what you want. So that's kind of the premise behind all this. Um, and then uh, then I did the, uh, uh, went through how to do a custom paper tear, uh, which was something that uh, Pamela asked for. Um, so I went through how I would go about doing that. And we, we touched on, we used Canva to export a custom image. And then we brought that into Camtasia. We added uh, text to the top of it, a logo, and we added a drop shadow to it. And that was kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, that, that was last week. So, and now I've also come out with three more videos since the last live. So I think this is three weeks running now that I've released three videos per week. Um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So since the last one, we came out with one on Wednesday which was how to add chapters to YouTube videos. Um, and that one was a little bit off topic, but uh, generally speaking, I'm, I'm feeling like, so most of my content is around Camtasia and making tutorial videos and how to, all the things that go along with that. Well, one of the things that kind of goes along with that is you may want to upload your videos to YouTube, the videos you make in Camtasia. So I included a little bit of a YouTube only uh, video there. So, um, that was that. Every once in a while, I'll do the same thing. This week, I'm going to come out with one that has to do with Google Drive and how you can use that as a content creator uh, to help your workflow. Um, and then the last video, which came out... Oh, sorry. There were two more videos. Last Friday, I came out with the zoom and pan, so pro-level zoom and pan techniques that I use. Uh, and that was kind of a little bit long, well, 12 minutes or so little bit longer, kind of walked through all kinds of different things you could do with zooms and pans uh, and the things you want to think about, like easing in and out and stuff like that. So that was a really good video. And then the one I was kind of excited about, I released yesterday, and that's the animated lights and shadows, which um, I would consider it a little bit more advanced. It's probably well beyond what most people are going to use Camtasia for, but it is a really cool way to get a 3D look um, to your presentations if that's if that's what you're doing. So 
Uh, I thought it was neat. I, the idea popped into my head. I, I was I think I was probably browsing through YouTube and I said, oh, I wonder if I could do that in Camtasia. And then I figured it out and made a video about it. So that I thought that was pretty cool. So it's a little bit longer. Uh, it came out yesterday. Um, it's 30 minutes. Uh, but if you want to see something I think is pretty cool, <laughs> if you want to see something cool that you can do in Camtasia, go check that, that video out. Um, it's on the channel. Uh, let me just get caught up with the messages here. Uh, Greg says, don't much care for StreamYard or Streamlit. Oh, I already, I already read that one. Uh, da, 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 da. Lean on OBS since I'm PC based. I was PC based, but now I'm Mac, but I know both. Still getting used to the Mac. <laughs> um, Greg says, I've been watching a lot of your content since I just purchased Camtasia through your affiliate link. Hey, awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Um, and I'll, uh, again, if you have any questions about how to do anything or if there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot of help, helpful videos on YouTube and in the Camtasia, the TechSmith website uh, that help you get you going. But if there's anything that you need, to know how to do uh, that you can't find the answer for, by all means, ask away in here and uh, I'll do my best to answer it. So I'm currently in the mode of looking for content to, uh, or looking for ideas for content to, to fill up these live streams. Uh, and I have more than I need right now, but uh, um, by all means, I'd love to, I'd love to help out as much as I can. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll take that. Take that from there. So, and now Pamela Powers says, that was neat. Um, uh, you're probably referring to the video I released yesterday. I, I thought that was pretty neat too. <laughs> um, and there's a couple other ideas that I have in my head about how you can apply those. Um, there's one interesting thing I know, well, it's gonna be hard to just talk through, but another way you can make a, a shadow move that doesn't just kind of uh, disappear and then reappear, but actually move around a circle. I've got an idea about how to how to make that happen, but that's again that's getting fairly advanced and not most people won't need to know how to do that. Or but if you see something like that, like that done, if you see somebody go through a tutorial like that, more often than not, it'll generate other ideas in your head. Say, okay, uh, yeah, that's cool, but you know uh, what I would do is something a little bit different. I wonder if I could use that to do what I want to do. So hopefully. The content that I'm making will help generate new ideas that you guys might come up with. So, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the, the plan. Um, Greg says, I split my devices. I'm PC for desktop, but iOS for mobile and iPad. I use my iPad as much as I do my actual PC since I have it connected to two monitors when I'm editing audio podcasts. Okay, that's cool. Very good. Um I, I think I'm sim I don't use an iPad very much. I, I have an old one, but uh, I, I certainly don't use it like a computer. Like I know you can, especially the newer ones, the iPad Pros, I guess. Um, but I am, I'm, everything else is I, everything like iPhone, iPods or AirPods. <laughs> uh, and now the Mac and everything talks to each other very easily, very well. So I, I love that about, about the Apple ecosystem. It's nice. Uh, things just work. <laughs> Is, is my my experience with that. So um, yeah, great. Um, what's next? So those are the latest videos. I have two more videos on the way, already made, already uploaded to YouTube, scheduled for tomorrow, and then one on Friday. Uh, and then I have several ideas for ones that I'll have ready for next week. Uh, so the same thing, we'll go three videos a week, uh, for as long as I can, um, or probably at least three videos a week until Camtasia 2024 comes out. And that, at that point, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and focus pretty much so well, not solely, but I'm going to focus on, uh, Camtasia, whatever's new in Camtasia 2024. I want to make videos highlighting those things and teaching people how to use those things once I know how to use them myself. <laughs> So um, one question I do have, though, um, uh, and uh, uh, I suppose I can uh, I can type it out here. But anyway, uh, is as far, uh, for my future content, the videos that I'm making, 
Would you prefer to see me make more complicated and complex videos like the one yesterday? If you've seen that, you know what I mean. Um, that was quite complicated or, or involved, and it was long, like a full-length tutorial. Um, do you like those types of videos more? Or there's a lot of smaller things, basic things, that people need to know. Like if you're just getting started with Camtasia, maybe you don't even know the basics. Like maybe you want to know what a timeline is and how to, how to move around in the timeline, how to move around in the canvas, um, how to export for YouTube, how to export in MP4 format, how to set up your frame rate. Like there's a lot of, or how to do a recording. Um, basic things and a lot of basic things and a lot of the tools that are in Camtasia. I could do a very short video on like how to use, uh, uh, you know, how to use the spotlight effect. Instead of going through a 30 minute video like I did, explaining, you know, one specific way to use the, the spotlight effect in 3D and motion and all that stuff, maybe just a video on the spotlight effect and here are the things you can do with it and, and limit it to that and maybe limit it to five to five to seven minutes. Would you prefer those types of short videos that hit on all the aspects of Camtasia or do you like the longer ones that get into more complicated use cases if you know what I mean. So um, let me know what, what you think. Um, and uh, that might be a general question that I might uh, come out with, with a video or even in the community tab or something just to find out what you're looking for. So um, uh, let me see. Greg says, looking to replace the PC with a Mac mini and dual monitors. Ah, very nice. That, that would be good. Um, uh, something Mac mini. So that's the little box, I guess the little box that, that needs monitors. Um, that would be cool if you don't ever plan to travel anywhere. And, um, uh, what I would probably do except for my, like in my, and that probably is perfect for you. For me personally, I like to be able to grab my laptop and, and go, like if I'm going to go away for a weekend, uh, or, or like a week, um, I want to be able to still work and whatnot. I can just close my laptop, unplug three cables and take it with me. And I have the same power with me. And I also have a little monitor, this little guy here uh, that I'm looking at here. I don't have my iPhone set up today. Haven't figured out how to do it yet with the eCam. <laughs> but this little tiny flat 18 inch monitor I take as well. And I can plug my MacBook into that. That gives me dual monitors, which is all I would need in a hotel. Um, uh, but yeah, no, the Mac mini that's, I've never used that. Uh, but my understanding is it can get even more powerful than the MacBooks. So, uh, that would be, that would be cool. That would be nice. Um, uh, Greg Hyatt says for me personally, more segmented, more segmented and category specific type videos. Okay. That, and that's what I thought. And I haven't done a lot of those. Um, square egg says, uh, hi square egg. How you doing? Thanks for joining the live stream. Uh, uh, Square Egg uh, says, I prefer the use case videos. Okay, very good. So one vote for each <laughs> use case and and more uh, category specific. Uh, and then Pamela Powers says, both. I was happy that I could follow you for yesterday's. Awesome. Very good. So that's that's one vote for one, one vote for the other, and one for both. So that's, that's pretty evenly split right down the middle. Um, which is good because the one that's coming out tomorrow is is kind of a well, it's like a little trick. It's it's a short video and it's how to do the. I don't know if you how many of you saw the um, the color grading tutorial that I came out with two weeks ago. Now uh, how to color grade in Camtasia. It was fairly basic, um, but now the video at the very beginning of that video, I showed the screen wiping the color grade effect onto the screen. Uh, so. I then made a video about that, and that's what's coming out tomorrow. How to do that? How to create that what that color grade wipe effect? So if you color grade something and you make it look better or different or whatever, uh, you can transition from one to the other with this uh, the method that I will show you in tomorrow's video. <laughs> it's already made. I think it's only four minutes, four less than five minutes, anyways. That video. Um, yeah. So look forward to that. A, a, a shorter video. Uh, Greg says, as long as your phone is plugged into your Mac, you should be able to detect your phone in eCAM. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't plug it in. What I had done before is, well, let me just try this right now while you're, uh, let's try this live. 
What I used to do was I would go to general and under airplay and handoff, I would select handoff and continuity camera. And that was enough for my camera to start being a source. But, um, oh, you know what? I never set it up as a, as a, uh, uh, as a source. That's what I would have to do. I'd have to go to, uh, plus here. Uh, no, no, you're seeing me do this live. So uh, that was the screen one plus on the video and change the video. So you can see this here. That's, that's this camera right in my Mac. <laughs> uh, now I should be able to change that. Uh, oh, there we go. Rob's iPhone camera. Click to start. There you go. That worked. Let me let me put it on this thing here. Sorry. There. How's that? That works. Awesome. Did that live. Very good. Now, oh, what's it doing? Is it zooming automatically? Is it following me around? Okay. I'm going to have to dive a little deeper into that. Let's get rid of this one. Uh, okay, I've got a lot of things going on the screen here. Let me turn this one back on. How do I get back to me? Change the camera. Right here. There we go. <laughs> and turn that back on okay wow all right i'm gonna to have to get used to that um but yeah everything that you just saw me do there i'm kind of doing like i can select these cameras here live and on screen that camera or that camera so that's three cameras right uh and i can cycle through those live um, but what I need to do is I need to map all those button clicks to my stream deck. And then it's just a press of a button and you label the stream deck buttons accordingly. Uh, and then, uh, it becomes much easier. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Greg. <laughs> we got the, we got the iPhone working, um, without plugging it in. So continuity camera, uh, da -da 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 -da. Greg says, my question is, and possibly I haven't fell across one yet is how, if you create one screen recording, how do you go from a circle cam back to a full screen version cam to be able to switch back? Okay, um, uh, let me just uh, read uh, forward here. Da, 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 da. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, so how do you go from the circle cam to the uh, uh, full screen? So, you basically have to cut it. You, you cut the clip or split the clip is what you do in Camtasia. So um, I haven't yet figured out how to, and it's probably not that difficult, but I would like to, and maybe this is what you're talking about. I would like to be able to animate going from circle mask up to full screen, like, like circle mask down in the corner here and then up to full screen. Um, that animation I haven't done yet. I haven't tried to. Um, it may not be as hard as I'm thinking it might be, but maybe it is hard. <laughs> but uh, as far as going from circle mask and and back, why don't I just uh, let me show share you my or share my screen with you, uh, if I can. Oh, again, this is not. Uh, is it this one? Yes. Okay. This is okay. So now I'm sharing my Camtasia screen. Let me open a project. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Let's see the. Let's open this big one from yesterday. Okay. This is the video that I came out with yesterday, and it's quite. Uh, it's quite. Oh, I've got the same shirt on that I did. When I that I had when I made this video, very good. Okay, um, so this is that video. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something here that's similar to what you were asking, Greg. Um, you want to know how to go from so this is me full screen, and okay, you can see I had some B roll there. So this is me full screen, and it's right there. 
Okay. Then I played the intro. Okay. And then I'm now it's not a circle mask in this case. It's uh, um, I've got a, the background removed and I made myself smaller. Um, but the reason I was able to do that, I set the properties up. This is the track here for me, the video of me. Okay. And it's split. Like I just started it here. Whereas this one ended here. Okay. So I just split, I split it and then, and then created the circle mask on the new one. So, um, if you want to create a circle mask only for a portion of the video of you, I would cut that portion out, like split it at the beginning and the end and apply the circle mask effect to that center section. Okay. Now, again, that, that doesn't allow you to animate to that state. Uh, and I'm going to have to put some thought into how, how that works, how you, how you can do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, hopefully that helps. Um, uh, let me see. D -d -d. To a full screen of my webcam, or do you have to separate clips? Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah, separate clips. Have to separate the clips. Um, because you're applying an effect to the entire clip. If it was an animation, then... Uh, then then it wouldn't, and I'm just thinking out loud here, I'm wondering if there is a way to animate to that state. But again, I'm going to be stuck on that. So I'm, I'm going to try to stop talking about that. I'm going to be stuck on that for a while, how to, how to do that. That's going to take some time to figure out. <laughs> but I hope that answered your question. Um, Greg says it's working perfectly. That's the continuity camera. That's great. Thank you for your help with that. Uh, it will get easier once you get it mapped out to your stream deck. A hundred percent, it'll get easier. <laughs> uh, the uh, Ecamm is pretty slick. I mean, it's got all these things here. Um, uh, if I were to, okay, just switch the camera there, just so you know what I'm looking at here. So that's that's Ecamm. Okay, that's what it looks like on the on the MacBook. So it's got all these. I can see the chat here, and I'm just clicking. All I have to do is click one here, right, and it'll appear on screen. Uh, and then it's got all the other. Uh, there's all kinds of things going on in the screen. And we've got that 3D kind of tunneling effect going on there. But, um, yeah, so it's just going to take some getting used to for me. I'm getting entirely too many screens. <laughs> screens go on here at the same time, at one time. Um, uh, Greg Hyatt says, uh, exactly, yes. I know I have to split the clips. Just wasn't sure if I had to create totally separate clips or if it could just be one. Uh, yeah, one clip per effect. If you add an effect to a clip, it gets added to the entire clip. Uh, and that effect being the circle, the circle mask. Um, okay. And Greg says that makes sense. Okay, cool. Awesome. Glad that that helped. Um, and again, whenever I say how to do something in Camtasia, it's not usually the only way. <laughs> so, what I'm what I'm providing providing through my channel, through my videos and these live streams, uh, is I'm showing you how I do things. I've used Camtasia for many years. There's a lot of things about Camtasia I haven't used, and I'm kind of learning some of these things as I go uh, to be able to show you and and to level up my own knowledge. But so because of that, there are certain things that that I've gotten very used to doing in Camtasia and that I've done for a long time. Um, but uh, there could be easier ways, better ways, different ways to do things. Uh, more often than not, there are more than one way to do certain things in Camtasia, in any software, really. But uh, Camtasia is getting so powerful, so um, versatile. Like, there's more and more things you can do with it. And, and it's, it's, it's quite the tool in that you don't have to just limit yourself to what a tool was designed for. You can combine tools, combine effects to achieve some pretty cool things. For example, the video yesterday with the spotlight and the shadows. So the spotlight effect, I, I've never seen a video. Now, maybe it exists, but um, there's, there's, video, there's videos that will show you how to use the spotlight effect. There's, and I didn't get that, that deep into that effect either. I only showed it very generally how I use it, um, but there's other things. You could make a spotlight, just a glowing light that's a circle that's, that just goes around your screen um, that, that isn't coming from a source, 
Uh, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do. You can change the color of the spotlight. I never did that at all in that video. It was white the whole time. You could make it yellow or maybe an off yellow, like a warmer light, uh, but you can make it green if you wanted to, like blue, whatever. Um, all kinds of different effects that you can, you can achieve with that. And then you've got the drop shadow, which I believe is intended just to give some depth to whatever object you put on the screen. So you can add it, you can add it to your screen if you make the screen a little smaller so that you can see the background. Or you can add it to call outs on the background or on a video or on the screen. Um, but I, I thought it was pretty neat to to use it in conjunction with the spotlight so that you're you're giving it that natural look. Like if the light is shining from up in this corner, you've got a drop shadow going this way and, and vice versa, right? Uh, so yeah, just Use, use your mind, come up with some creative things, and there's a good chance you can make it happen in Camtasia. Um, let's see, what's next here? Greg, Greg says, wouldn't a custom animation work for a second half of the clip to possibly make it like flip in or something like that? Um, yeah, actually, maybe, maybe that, that does make sense. Um, you could split off the very end of your circle mask, right? And, and make it animate, maybe make it. So I'm, I'm thinking of the end of the video, right? You've got a circle mask down in the corner of your video, your face in the circle. And then maybe you animate that whole thing. So maybe it spins and gets huge off the screen. And then you cut to the, to the full screen version of you, which is the next clip. And adding a transition to that might might help with that effect. Why don't we give that a shot? <laughs> Why don't we try that live? Um, let me share my screen. Uh, the, this scene here. Okay, here we go. Let's, uh, let's move this out of here. Uh, I've got, I've got far too many windows open, but Anyhow, let's delete these. Let me open up a project that already has a circle mask in it. So um, go to my projects. Uh, trying to think what's the best one to, to get here. 3D animated light and shadow, the recordings. No, um, sample projects. Here we go. I'm going to make a copy of it. We go light live. Okay. Now let's open this up. Opening a new project here. Okay. So this is the sample project. This is not the video I made yesterday. This is the sample project that I was making in the video that I made yesterday, if that makes sense. Um, uh, let me see, uh, quickly before I, let's see, trying to, how do I do, you know what I have to figure out? I have to figure out, can I just copy that and put, paste it over here? Oh yeah, I can. All right, cool. And I can move that. All right. I can put your guys' comments on this screen now. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. Awesome. Uh, okay. Okay, that's not good. Sorry, guys. Let's see here. What am I doing? New scene. Okay, now I should be able to click that. Okay, got to get rid of that one. Sorry. Sorry, I think I've got it now. I just can't click more than one. Just got to X that out. So Greg says, that's why I dropped my Adobe subscription as different tools such as Camtasia, Canva Pro, and a couple other tools are both more affordable and easier to use. I 100% agree. Um, I still have an Adobe subscription, but I've, I've dropped it down to one program because I still use Adobe Audition uh, for audio. Um, now, probably fairly soon, I'm going to, I think I'm going to switch to Audacity, which is a free tool, um, but I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've gotten so used to audition. Um, 
it, it's it's pretty cool. Like I do, I use it for voiceovers as well. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to to switch that or not. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, no, Canva Pro and Cam Canva Pro is awesome. Like, and you really do have to go pro if you if you're ever going to if you ever want to use um, transparent backgrounds. So like what I do with these uh, screen overlays, right? Um, this overlay here that I have uh, here, right here. Uh, see how it's see through? That's because it's a it's a fifty percent opacity uh, black background behind that text. And then everything that you see of me here is transparent. If I didn't have Canva Pro and I exported this image, uh, it would have been white and you wouldn't be able to see me through it. It just would have been a, a white screen. So Canva Pro is awesome. Camtasia is awesome. And together you can do some awesome things. Um, Square Egg says, it will be interesting to see what updates we get in Camtasia 2024. Seems to get better and better. Definitely does seem to get better and better. And I'm pretty excited. I'm looking forward to what's going to be in that version as well. Um, as I say, uh, last year, I think it was April that 2023 came out, I believe. It was June when 2022 came out. Uh, so who knows? Um, it'll, it, it'll be soon. I'm trying to stay on top of that as to when it comes out. And as soon as I know it's out, uh, I'm going to go live and we're going to go through it. We're going to go through what's new in it, what's uh, better, what's, you know, we'll try to figure it out together. And that might be a longer live stream. It was two years ago when I did that. <laughs> um, uh, Greg says, when are those updates supposed to be released? Uh, what updates? So twenty twenty. if you're referring to 2024, I'm not sure. Um, uh, but yeah, so probably soon. That's all I can say. Sometime between like this week and two months from now. <laughs> so somewhere in the next couple of months. Uh, and, uh, if I get, I know two years ago, I did have about one week advance notice. Um, I don't know if they were just feeling generous, uh, support, text miss support when I submitted my, my question that day. Um, but they actually said, oh, you know what? It's coming out, you know, next week or whatever. So, awesome. Great. And then I could plan for it. Um, already I've asked them this year and they just said, oh, you'll know, you know, when it comes out, when everybody does. So, um, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, I'm going to ask again. <laughs> well, no harm in trying, right? Um, uh, Greg says, look into the WavePad audio editor. Okay, yeah. I think many years ago I did use use that, um, but it's been a while. So, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that as well. All I'm looking for with audio is uh, I want to make my voice sound better uh, for my recordings. For the, I think this sounds fine for live, um, but uh, for... For uh, like uh, voiceovers, so I do a lot of voiceovers for my videos. I'll make videos for clients uh, uh, through Fiverr, and I put my voice to them. And so for those voiceovers, I want the audio to be as good as it can be. Um, it could always be better. I mean, this isn't an ideal room for recording. I should have some sound panels on the ceiling, and it's a nine foot ceiling here. Um, and I should have more. I've got curtains here. But I've also got big flat monitors in front of me, and, and that's not good for, for sound. Um, but I could have some more furniture and curtains and, and things like that. Big, massy stuff, like lots of mass is good for sound absorption. Um, so, but, so I don't have that. And because I don't have that, I use a shotgun mic, which is really good at only picking up from you know one place um, and not grabbing background noise. Um, but yeah, so I, I then use Audition. I record that into Audition, and then I and then I modify it. I what I I use the term process. I process the audio, and by process that means I might remove a little bit of background noise if there is any uh, in it, and I would uh, add some compression. And what that does is, if you go, if 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 in a voiceover you're really low in places in volume, and then you're you're yelling louder in other places. Um, that might be uh, a little jolting, I guess, to the to the listener. Compression will basically squeeze that down. It'll make your the parts that were too loud, it'll soften them a bit, and the parts that were too low, it'll bring them up a little bit, and it'll make it more uniform. And actually, Camta Camtasia has a tool, has a compression tool inside Camtasia. I've never used the one in Camtasia. I've tried it, but uh, it's not what I generally use. 
Um, so I do that. And then there's also, I do some equalizing. I add a little bit of bass. I add a little bit of treble. I bring the mids down a little bit. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, and I, I put in a high pass filter, a low pass filter. There's a few different things that I do to make the, uh, the voice audio sound a lot better. Um, which is more important, especially if you're just doing voice. And I do some voiceover work as well. That's just voice and no video. So in those cases, you need really good audio. So, uh, and I've gotten really used to using Audition to make those edits happen. Now, having said that, I know you could probably do all of that in Audacity, probably even WavePad, um, but uh, I'm just not as used to them yet. And right now I'm busy learning Ecamm. So <laughs> we'll have to put the Audacity and uh, WavePad off to another time. <laughs> um, Oh, so let me get caught up here. Uh, Square Egg says, at Greg, I haven't seen any release dates just yet. It was late April last year, the year before it was June. Yes, absolutely. That's You're exactly right. And before that, I think it was April. Because I remember thinking the year, so 2022, I remember thinking when we were getting close to June, it's like, geez, every year it's like April. How come it's so late this year? And I don't know why it was, but uh, th I think that was the exception. So generally they are around April. So fingers crossed it's soon. Although it's a great program now, but it's always exciting to find out what, what new things uh, they're going to add. Uh, their updates seem to happen like updates do for us WordPress developers. LOL. <laughs> Very good. WordPress. My God. Um, my website, I built that on WordPress uh, through uh, SiteGround is the hosting I use, but I'm in the middle of switching that over to Kajabi. Um, but uh, I've, I've used WordPress. I've made a lot of WordPress video tutorials over the years. Uh, Love-hate relationship with WordPress. It's as good as, I like to think of it as, it's as good as the, uh, the template you put on, or the theme you put on top of it. <laughs> um, I heard a stat somewhere, I think there's something like 70, 70 odd percent of the world's websites are on WordPress. That was a few years ago now. I don't know if it's the same, but a lot. A lot of people use WordPress. Uh, Greg says, compression and limiter, both are available in WavePad. I use it when editing our church's podcast, which I do completely in WavePad audio. Oh, okay, very good. Maybe I will have to look at WavePad. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have to compare that with, with Audacity. I've always heard Audacity is, um, is quite popular, maybe because it's 100% free. You know, that, that tends to, uh, to make things popular, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, Greg says, I was a huge Audition user and switching to WavePad was super easy and actually much more user intuitive. Okay, you're, you're selling me, Greg. You're selling me on this uh, WavePad. I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, caught up with the, uh, with oh, one more. I find Audacity. Okay, that's interesting. When, when I've got my comments, I've got YouTube here and I've got Ecamm here. There's about a four second delay when a comment comes up on my YouTube screen. It's four seconds later it comes up on Ecamm. So that's interesting. Just keep that in mind. If if I wait longer than four seconds to answer you, it's because I'm waiting for Ecamm. <laughs> Greg, Greg says, I find Audacity a little more cumbersome. Okay. I thought that too, especially when, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't look as professional to me because it's not, I guess. It's a free program. <laughs> a lot of money and time and design has gone into uh, audition over the years. Um, it, it seemed a bit clunky to me, like just editing out the, like when I do a voiceover, I do a lot of editing afterwards. Like um, I'll make sure the spaces, like the, uh, the time between each phrase is half a second or one second or whatever it is the same all the way through. So I'm, I'm doing heavy edits. Uh, all the time. And a lot of times I'll say something and then I'll have to say it again because I stumbled or tripped over a, a, a letter or word or whatever. Um, so I'm, but I don't stop my recordings. I just cut those mistakes out afterwards. I just, if I mess a sentence up, I'll say it again. And then I know I have to cut, I just have to listen to it all the way through and cut it out. And I found it a bit clunky, like for lack of a better word, when I, when I did that. Um, but maybe WavePad is, is better. Um, uh, Greg says, all the normal post-production things you are used to doing in Audition are complex in Audacity. WavePad is easy to find and execute. Okay. I wonder about, um, 
uh, like curves and whatnot. So a question for you. Um, I know in uh, audition, you can, like when you drop, when you lower the lows and or raise them or whatever, you can put points on a graph and you can drag the points up and down and it creates these nice curves. I know in Audacity, there are no curves. You put a point, you drag it up and it's like, a, you know, you have to, uh, they're all lines. You know what I mean? It's not very smooth. So you'd have to add a whole bunch more points. That to me seemed a bit um, harder or more work, I guess. Uh, so what about WavePad? Is that like that? I'm, I'd be curious to know if it's more like, you know, uh, Audition or if it's more like uh, uh, Audacity. Um, and Greg says, uh, you can use the points in audio just like you would a keyframe on a video. Okay. Okay, very good. Speaking of keyframes, that's one thing I'd love to see in Camtasia. Um, the ability to have a little more control over animations, right? Right now we get a line, an arrow. An animation is an arrow. Start properties, end properties. And you can change them all here, change them all here. And the only way to manipulate what happens between them is you can change the easing, right? You can make it linear or none easing. You can ease in, ease out. Um, that's really all you can change. But it would be nice to be able to manipulate that little cut, like custom easing, they could call it, and, and bring up a graph and then have these points that you can manipulate. I think that would be cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, just an aside. You got me thinking there. Um, okay. Where should we go next? Um, time we have. We're, we're coming up on 50 minutes. Um, haven't even really gotten into today's topics. Uh, and we may not get through all of these. Um, but I've got a couple of pretty cool things. There was one thing. Um, I haven't seen Renee in the chat yet today. Uh, so perhaps uh, he's not here. He or she, I'm not sure. Renee, you never know what that name could be, he or she. <laughs> I'm not sure. But Renee uh, from Denmark, I believe, um, uh, was asking about flowing lines and how to do that. Uh, and I didn't know. And last week he asked again, and I still didn't know. Now I know. I figured it out how to do it. Uh, and I was going to show, sh I, I suppose, I'm going to create a video on how to do that as well. Um, but uh, it, it's relatively easy. Let me throw this up on the screen. Have we fit? Oh, wait now. Let me show you my screen uh, right here. Um, so I've got a bad habit of going down ta tangents and not finishing thoughts. Have we finished everything that I wanted? I don't remember why I brought this up here. I think we changed. This is the video I made yesterday, how to, oh, I was going to show you how to do the uh, the spinning, how we might, uh, how we might animate this back to full screen, right? So let's, let's do that here. So this is all pretty cool. This, and I showed how to do all this stuff in the video that I, I released yesterday. Um, this was the 3D spotlight and shadowing effects, right? Um, but now let's say we get to this point and we want to spin this uh, circle mask back up to full frame. So I am going to delete these two animations. And we're going to work with the back half of the, the last end of this here. So at this point, let's split all of this. So I highlighted, highlighted them and I hit the letter S for split, or you can click on the, uh, the uh, scissors up here, cut. Um, no, that's not right. It should have been split. This one here is the split one, right? Yeah, with something highlighted, you can click over here and split. But I just used the, the shortcut S. Um, now, what I was thinking we could do, and we're just going to mess around with this one, is let's put an animation on it, custom animation. Well, let's make it happen fairly quickly. So 
let's even go quicker than that. Okay, so, whoops. What we can do is, so this is our starting point, okay? Which, which is the properties here. At the, the starting and the ending properties always start off the same with when you drag an animation down onto a clip. Um, so let's put the playhead at the end. We're gonna modify what things look like at the end. Now I'm gonna scale this up, but I was thinking, what if we had that circle mask spin, right? And by spinning, I mean, probably the Z, no, not that one, Control Z. Oh, right off the bat, I know we're gonna wanna change. Okay. Oh, we're gonna want to, there we go. Let me take this, uh, I'm gonna take canvas snapping off. There, see what I'm, okay, see what I'm doing here? This point here, when without pressing any keys, this point here is our rotation point. See, it's rotating around that X right there. I'm, I control Z to go back. If you wanna move the point that it rotates around, you have to press control, probably command on a Mac. I know I'm on a Mac, but I actually, <laughs> That's a tangent, but I switched my control and command on the Mac so it's like a PC. That's just me though, so. <laughs> um, you hit control, press control, and then when you hover over it, press your mouse button and move it. Now you're moving the position where it rotates around. Like if I put it way up there and tried to rotate, see that, it's rotating around that point up there now. Okay, so I'll hit control. I'm gonna move this right to the center, okay? Now, with this selected, if I were to rotate, so it's not the, the uh, which one was that? Was that, here it is, it's the Y. See what the Y does? So if you start at zero is there, 180, if you go 180 degrees, you can t just type the number in there. You guys are seeing what I'm doing, yep. Uh, and then hit tab, 180 goes all the way around. Well, 180, half of the way around. If you typed in 360, that's a full rotation, okay? And if you animate through that, see that? One, two. Well, one to the 180, and then the second one is the 360. So what's 360 times two? 720, okay? Let's change it to 720. That would be two, two full rotations, right? So now it's spinning faster. Okay, see what that looks like. Okay, pretty cool. Now we can mess around with the easing as well. Let's right click this animation arrow and under easing, it says none right now. Let's put it on exponential in and out, which is easing in and easing out. So what happens there, this, the, the rotation sped up. So I think if we then also in this same animation, if we added the enlarge effect, um, but we want to enlarge it to larger than what the final one will be, if that makes sense. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have split this here after the animation is done. Let's do that here. Uh, right here. Let's split all this, right? And the properties of this here, I'm going to have to manipulate to full screen. Okay, I can do that. I can do that shortly. We'll do that afterwards. So let's finish this. So the spinning, let me just make my screen smaller here, zoom out so I can see everything. Now, I'm gonna want this to go to the center. So let's move this to the center. Okay, and now let's scale it way up. Uh, scale, if I scaled it up, Can I make this even hold down shift? Oh, well, it's nothing. I guess I don't have to, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, does it? 
So actually, I'm going to, yeah, maybe I don't want to scale it up quite that big. See what it's doing? So once we get to a certain point, we're going to flip over to the full screen. So I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of go back and forth here. That's, that's bigger than I want it to be. Okay, so how do I get back? Here we go. Uh, scale this down a little bit. That's probably closer to the actual size I want to end up being. So to know, let's just come over here to this one. Let's remove that mask altogether. So I just hit this up arrow and under mask here, I can just delete it. Or you can leave it there and just come up here and remove the mask this way. Okay, mask is gone. Um, and now let's just resize this. Let's let's uh, enable canvas snapping so it snaps into place. Okay, that is what we want to end up with. This is where we are now. Okay, so let's bring this down a little bit. Is that close? It's close, it's a little bit bigger. But I don't think we'll notice that once we uh, um, apply the, the transition. Um, let's just make this mask even bigger and nope, not that one. This one here. You guys see what I'm doing? There we go. Uh, now, actually, I wonder if I can just snap this in place like this. And just stretch these out of the way. That might be exact, is it? Pretty darn close. Is that 720? What if I reset that? No. If I did that, and then for a transition, what if we, let's go to transition, let's, I'm thinking some kind of a flash transition or a flare, something like that. Let's try that one, just see what that looks like. Go full screen. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, I see, yeah, see what happened there in, in that animation. Um, yeah, I didn't love the way that worked. See how it was cutting off? We needed that. We didn't want, uh, how do we, I think, hmm, I'm going to have to play around with this some, some more. But I think that that should give you a bit of an idea as to how you could achieve something like that, like, like transitioning back to full screen, something like that. Uh, or maybe we even cut this back into the animation like that. Would that work? And then add the, uh, let's try that flare one. I don't know. What do you think? Is that something along the lines of what you were looking for? It needs some uh, massaging. It needs a little bit of help to make it look uh, crystal clear. And maybe that's something I can look at doing a little bit better in the uh, in the future. But uh, just off the top of my head, that uh, I don't think that's that's that bad. I don't like the way it cuts off the top like this. So that so um, and it also it's stretching more of an oval as well. So. Um, there's some things we can, we can do a little bit differently to make that happen a little more smoothly, but, uh, it's kind of a neat effect, kind of a neat effect. Um, yeah, so, okay, where are we? Go back here. Uh, da, 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 da.
Hey, Greg says, that was super close and a great starting point. Cool. Cool. Yep. Um, something to think about. Uh, could probably do it a little bit better with some more thought and some more playing around. That's what I tend to do when I get into Camtasia. Just start playing around and uh, you can find you can do some pretty cool stuff. Like I've never done anything remotely close to that. Um, so if you've got the idea in your head, and if you if you get familiar with all the tools that are in Camtasia, then you can generally come up with some pretty cool effects, some pretty cool ideas. Um, let me move on to uh, flowing lines. Okay, so I'm actually just going to save this one, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to bring this, going to close that, and this is a fresh new. Let me show you what I see. <laughs> a fresh new uh, uh, Camtasia project. Um, so now I'm going to explain what I don't have a, a picture of what he was looking for, but think about um, a flow chart, right? Where you have like a box and then you have an arrow pointing to another box or maybe the arrows split and point to two different things, right? And these are arrows and generally static lines. Well, he wanted to look of these arrows being animated, almost like you can see the flowing of the line, if that makes sense. They want the line to be animated, not the whole line moving, not the whole line moving across the screen, just within a certain point, have the, the line on the inside of it, like there's something flowing through it. So here's how you do that. So animated flowing lines. Um, let's start with, uh, let's start with changing my screen. You guys can see me, right? Yep. Change my screen color to white. Okay. Easier to see. Now let's go grab an arrow. So we'll go up to annotations. Oh, I had annotations open. What's going on here? Annotations. There we go. Uh, and arrows. And let's grab this arrow right here. So we have an arrow, okay? Um, now you can stretch the arrow in both directions. Uh, I have canvas snapping on. Let me turn that off. That might become a problem. Okay, now this arrow, let me change the color so you can actually see what I'm doing. That would be easier to see, I think, blue like that. Um, we can increase the thickness a little bit. You can see what I'm doing here. Now. I want this to be an arrow pointing in one direction, okay? So not both directions. So with the arrow selected, we come over to our properties area, and here's the line style. See, it has an arrow and a line and then an arrow. So this arrow is the part of the line that's on the left, and you can change it. So let's just change it to this squared off, just like that. So there's only an arrow head on the one end, okay? Um, I'm going to make a copy of this, and I'll tell you why later. So let's copy, Control-C, and then Control-V to paste it. So I have, did that not work? Oh, yeah, it's down here. So I will move this one down here for now, okay? So let's work with this one. Um, and you can, change again, you can, change, uh, you can change the opacity, the thickness, right, whatever you want. Um, but let's just leave it like that. The line style, so you have different line styles. So that's just like a dotted line, and that's a dashed line. I think that would look better, the dashed line, for, for what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, uh, and there's all kinds of different types of arrows. So if this isn't the exact look you want, there's all kinds you can choose from. Okay, so... Uh, this is the one that I've I've done this with already, um, so we'll stick with that. Now, now what you want to do is go to Visual Effects, okay, and excuse me, scroll down, uh, and let's move this arrow out of the way down here, and let's go to Media Mat. No, not yet. Sorry, sorry, I jumped ahead of myself. Let's go back to Annotations grab a square. I've got one of my favorites right here. And we're going to position this over the arrow or over the line of the arrow. Okay. You just need to cover it up. Okay. 
And now let's make this, let's make it black. I'm trying to remember how I did this before, and I think this is, uh, this is how it works. Let me just think now. Yes. Okay, before we do that, before we do that, let's make this line longer. Let's, let's make it right off the screen. Okay, and I'm holding shift down so that it stays perfectly horizontal. Okay. Now, all right, I'm trying to remember how this is a little bit, uh, a little bit on the complicated side. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, okay. So now with that selected, let's go back and put our square on top of this, just like this. And, and you, you put it, you make it as long as you're going to want the arrow. You're not going to see this part because we're going to use media mat to only show what's behind this square, if that makes sense. Okay. So, so now with this square selected, let's go up to visual effects and drag the media mat onto that square. Okay? So now you can now what that does, if you look down here, it's only showing because because the media mat was applied, it's only showing what was behind that square and not the part of the line that goes beyond it. If that makes sense? Okay? So now what you want to do is with the line highlighted you're going to grab a animation, custom animation, and you want to right click and change the easing to none because we want this to be a constant speed. Okay. And then we're going to animate that line. Well, before we drag it right off to the end, let's come up to the line. We're going to hold shift down. Nope, wrong thing. With the line. Selected, hold shift down, grab the line, and move it. Okay. You, I think you saw what happened there. So now if we played this back, the line is moving. Okay, now maybe that's not moving fast enough. We want to move faster. We shorten this. Okay. Like that. Okay. Now, so let's bring it back here. Let's bring in our other arrow. Okay, and now the size, oh, I went and modified the size. Okay, let's, uh, with this arrow selected, let's come up to properties and change the thickness of the arrow to match what the other one was. And what was the other one? That arrow says 17.1. So this one, let's just make it the same. Type it in 17.1. Okay, and I'm gonna place this arrow on top of the other arrow. And we only want the arrow head. So let me just zoom in here, make sure I'm, I mean, that looks close enough. Uh, and then with that selected, where's the other end of that? Just right here. Yeah, the, the holding down the shift to make sure it stays horizontal only works in the one direction that I've found. Let's grab our arrowhead and we'll put it up here. Now we can zoom in, make sure it's in a, a good spot. That's probably good there. Okay. Now let's just see what that looks like. Okay, flowing line, seems to look good. All right, and now when you're finished with it, you can highlight them all, right click and group them. So now you have an asset, okay, a flowing line asset. And now say you wanted it to be 
let's say, uh, oh, I don't know, you, you, you can take this and you can move it wherever you want. You can create another one. Control C, Control V. Now I've got another one. This one, maybe this one, I want to be, you know, vertical. Okay, and maybe I want to crop this down and I only want it, you know, that large. Right, I can I can put that there, um, and maybe let's copy and paste again so I have another one. Maybe this one I don't want to have that arrowhead, so I can just crop it down like that, and then this one. Where's the rotation point? Is here. Let's move that again. Let's move it. To there and let's rotate it like this let's put the move back on and just something like that let's just see move this back to the beginning see what that looks like something like that Renee if you're out there <laughs> is that what you're looking for that's what I think you were looking for something like that and then once you build one you can just copy paste, copy paste. You could go in to the group and change the color. Um, uh, and you can use different types of lines, different size, uh, like dotted lines uh, or, or dashed. I think there's some that are like big dash, little dash, big dash, stuff like that. So um, there's all different kinds of ways you can modify this to suit your needs. That's how I would do that. So hopefully that helped if you're out there, Renee, anywhere. Uh, but if not, I think this was kind of a cool thing. So I'm probably going to make a video on this too. So you can look for that. If you miss this, you can look for that. <laughs> okay. So um, let's just check my, uh, I'll check my messages again. Where was I? I think I just missed one here. Greg says, uh, after you created the asset, couldn't you apply the animated line path onto it if needed? the animated line path on to, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Um, once I once I created the asset, apply the animated line path. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I see what you mean. Let's, let's, let's see what, let's move this over here. Let's ungroup this. Let's just play with this one here. So you mean take the animation out of there. So it's not animated. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. You you couldn't apply it to all three of the uh, of the uh, uh, portions of the asset because this arrowhead is included there. You want that arrowhead to stay the same, but you probably could group these two together uh, and then apply an animation to those two. Um, Uh, no, because the media mat box, the shape with the media mat is also moving and we don't want that, right? So it doesn't work that way. Maybe I misunderstood what you were suggesting. But having said that, um, there probably is another way to do what I just did. That's just what I came up with. Um, but it, there's, there's probably another way to do it, and there may even be a better way to do it. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, yeah, and if you do come up with a better way to do it, by all means, I'd love to, I'd love to see it and love to hear it. And uh, we can talk about it here um, perhaps next week in the live stream or at a future, a future live stream. But, uh, yeah, so that's uh, – I think that's what Renee was looking for. So hopefully that, that helped. Um, so uh, is there any other questions? How far did we get through? Uh, we've been at this an hour and 15 minutes, and I don't have to leave uh, just yet if if uh, anybody has any other questions for me. Um, oh, the hologram. So the angled blinds transi transition, I think I'll leave that one. Uh, I am uh, going to make a video on that. Um, so So basically... Camtasia has a lot of transitions, 
Okay, a lot of transitions, a lot of different transitions uh, that you can choose from. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't create your own custom transitions. Excuse me. And, uh, and that's what I'm going to make a video on very soon. Probably before my next live stream. So as I say, I have the next two videos scheduled to go out. Um, that might be the very next one that I make. So it may be out before I come back live next Tuesday. So uh, that's going to be pretty cool. Way to create your own custom uh, animated transitions. Angled blinds is specifically what he was looking for. Um, so keep your eyes open for that. I'm going to skip that one for now. Um, let's see. Square Egg says, no questions from me. Thank you for the demos. No problem, Square Egg. Thanks for watching. Hope, uh, hope I'm able to help somewhat. Um, uh, so 3D lighting and shadows. Kind of went through that. I might just very so yeah. That's the video I came out with yesterday, and and uh, I just put that down there. Uh, I was willing to go through that in uh, uh, you know as a demo. If anybody wanted to, uh, I'll just delete that. If anybody wanted to see how I did that, um, but uh, it, it was cool stuff. You know the the spotlight and the the ability to put the spotlight shining behind right behind the screen. Uh, and on the screen and then animating it. So that's that's all pretty cool. So uh, if you if you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about there check out the video that I released yesterday It's it is 30 minutes long, but there's a lot of cool and I walk through all of the steps on how to how to do that um, How to create that effect uh, Really really levels up your your videos makes it look super super professional not that that's always what you're trying to do but uh, um, that is one way to do it. <laughs> so the last thing I want to show you is a hologram that I made. And I got to close some of these windows. Here we go. So th it's this one here. Let me show you my screen. So it's, this is just kind of a general um, file that I had been using to, uh, Mess around with some stuff. This is where I was messing around with that line, right? The the flowing lines. Um, so, uh, oh, here we go. Learning and technology. Welcome to the live stream. I just noticed this popped up uh, with Frank. Hi, Frank. Uh, just did a quick binge of your videos. Thanks. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed them. <laughs> uh, and welcome to the live stream. Uh, I'm just going to go through, just to bring you up to speed, we've already covered a bunch of things. Um, uh, right now, I'm just going to show you something I was messing around with. Again, something I saw online that somebody did. Uh, actually, it was in DaVinci Resolve. I was going to say another editing program. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. I wonder if I can do that uh, in Camtasia. And I just kind of played around. And again, this is not very polished. So... Um, I can probably make it better in time. This was my first crack at this. Um, so let me show you. Oh, you probably got a sneak peek of it right there. So this is something that I created. And the shirt I was wearing was too dark. But that's not what I'm trying to show you here. So just watch. Actually, what is... Okay, yeah, watch what I've... I'm just going to play this so you can see what, what I've done. Uh, let me remove this from the screen. Okay. I'll keep that playing. Okay, hologram effect. So now a couple things I did wrong here. Um, my hand should have been in front of that screen, not behind it. Okay, then it would have looked better. Like if I came across this way with my hand, it would have looked a lot better. Um, if I just enlarge that, let me make it larger so you can see more of it. Okay, just play that again. So basically, I, I took a, a screenshot, okay, or a screen recording, and I recorded this in Camtasia. This is the screen recording here. Um, and the effects that I applied to it um, was just uh, right now, wait now. 
No, not that. Sorry. This one. Yeah, no, this, this one is me, right? This one is me, the video. This one is the screen recording. And what I did, if I have it highlighted, why can I not show that? Okay. Take three. This is my third attempt at saying this. This is not the screen recording. This is the audio. <laughs> this is my audio. This is the screen recording. Here we go. So what I did is let's go up to properties and click on this here, uh, the screen properties. And you can see I rotated the uh, X, Y, and Z axis, axes, right? I, I moved them all to get that 3D look, which again, I did in the video I released yesterday. Um, I added a clip speed to it. And the reason I did that is because I shot these in two different, two different times. I did the screen recording, right? Just a screen recording without uh, capturing myself in the video. And in that screen recording, I used my mouse to scroll three times. And I tried to, to um, keep, in, keep in mind the length of time, like the time between each of the three scrolls that I did, right? Then I recorded myself just doing this, tried to do it the same time intervals, right? Well, I wasn't exactly right. So it worked out that if I put a clip speed adjustment onto the screen, and then I, I, I modified the speed, I actually sped it up a little bit, the screen, to 1.28 times, then it more matched my finger motion. See that? So that matching of the finger motion I did afterwards. And that's why you see these markers here. So the markers actually are attached to not the timeline itself, but the clip. So this one has three markers, see? And I just put the markers where, like where I started the, the hand motion. Oh no, where the, this is the screen. <laughs> this is the screen. So that's where the screen started the scroll. There, there, and there. Okay. And then this one was the hand gestures. No, try again. This one. Okay. And, and that's, I well, can't see it over there, but you get the idea. So I used markers to mark off where I wanted. It, it easily allowed me to match up the, uh, uh, the hand gesture with the scrolling motion. Okay. So did that. Then the other things that I added to the screen to get this effect, let's go back to screen properties. Um, I turned the opacity down to 47%. And that's, that's just whatever you think looks best. So I needed it to be somewhat see-through so you can see my hand and have the holographic effect. So the opacity was changed. I, I changed the scale and the rotation um, and the position. All those things were, were modified to get it into the position it's in there. Um, and then, and the clip speed, I added colorize. So I just thought blue might l make the most sense. You know, you could choose different colors if you want. Want it to have a, a different effect, right? Go back to the blue. Whoops. Get this out. Uh, so the colorize, where are we? I added a small border, thickness of two, uh, and a drop shadow. I added a drop shadow offset zero, and I added a color to the drop shadow, the same color as the... Uh, uh, as the colorizing that I did. And these are a couple other things I tried. The glow and the reflection, right? See the reflection there? That, that is something else. I just didn't think that made sense. I tried it though. So anyways, that was just me messing around. I found something that I saw on, uh, you know, going through tutorials online and I thought it looked cool. I said, ah, let's see if I can make that. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. Probably going to make a video on how I do that. I might wait a little bit until I'm a little better at making this look as good as it possibly can. Um, as good as I think it can. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> before I, uh, I, turn, I make an actual video out of it, but I thought that was a pretty good start. You know, it took me, I don't know, maybe half an hour to come up with that. If you notice, it's kind of wiggling as well, right? That's because on the entire screen, I have all these... Uh, I have all, have all these things. Uh, which one would it have been? Sliding. So I added a uh, uh, this sliding effect. And how do I get there? Oops. That's in the behaviors right here. So if we go to behaviors, I had a sliding behavior. 
I didn't have any, any. So behaviors are another way you can use animations. And you got, there's a lot of cool ones in there. Um, uh, but uh, so I, I chose the sliding behavior. And just so you know, behaviors are over here. Right in here, all these different things here. Uh, but they allow you to do more than just the animations. I talked about it'd be nice if you could do some some other things within the animations. And really, you can if you use behaviors. So I use a sliding behavior. Um, but I didn't have it animating in and the out. I left as none as well. But the during, I chose wiggle. <laughs> and I, I, all these different things you can change to get different effects. And with that small amount of wiggle, you know, with these settings, that resulted in this little wiggle, this, like a hovering effect, if you will. Okay, and that's how I got that. All right, so, I don't know, what'd you think? Cool? <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> um, let's see, where are we in the chat here? Learning and technology with Frank says they're great. It's always great to learn new tricks. Absolutely, Frank. Thank you. Glad you like them. Uh, always eager to help. Uh, Greg says you should possibly rename your tracks so you know which ones are which, LOL. Yeah, yeah, that's, you're right. I, I should. That's not something I've ever really done, but you can definitely do that. You can rename your tracks. I'm not good at renaming my tracks, and I'm also not good at grouping either you should see some of my my uh, project files when i'm done i've got like sometimes 10 tracks going and uh then it becomes hard to uh to edit anyways on a smaller monitor for sure <laughs> um somebody mentioned i think it was last week though you can not something i've ever really done but uh, you can split your timeline away from your camtasia program and put it on a different monitor and then you can have a lot more vertical room as well just a neat trick um, that would be hard for me to show you here, but uh, uh, something you can do. Well, let me just quickly show you where you would do it. If I go back to the screen, uh, this, can you see? Uh, yeah, so if you come over here, is it this button here? Yeah, there. See the timeline disappeared? That's because it jumped up on the other screen. Let me move this up to the other screen and move my timeline down. There. So then I can stretch the timeline, make it as large as I want, and it's on a different screen. And if you want it to snap back to the rest of the program, so the rest of the program looks like just this. And you can put that on a different monitor, right, and make it larger. Um, but to snap it back, all you do is you hit this arrow again right here. Now it's snapped back to the other monitor, so we'll just bring it back down here. There you go. There you go. That's how you detach your timeline and then reattach it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I should get better at naming my tracks. Greg, yes, you are correct. Frank says, oh, wait, no, I missed one. Sorry. Greg says, uh oh, watch out now. We may have a new Tony Stark on the list. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, well, <laughs> I wish. Not quite at Tony Stark's level just yet. Working on it. <laughs> uh, Frank says, cool. Cool. Thumbs up. Greg says, that was super cool on the hologram effect. I thought so too, Greg. Thank you. <laughs> Glad you liked it. AI by AI. Like it. Thank you. And welcome to the live stream. Judging by your name, I'm wondering if you're a real, real person or not. AI by AI? Are you artificial intelligence? <laughs> Either way, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Am I caught up? No, a couple more comments here. Learning technology with Frank says, the only trick I have myself, proxy clips, plus, of course, what I learned over time. Yeah, proxy clips, they kind of jumped up and uh, 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 presented them to me by accident, really. Um, so proxy clip for those of you who don't know, is if you put a, uh, a video file, if you bring a video file into Camtasia, um, Camtasia may create automatically a proxy clip of that clip. So it's another copy of it, another version of it that's not as uh, detailed. So um, 
if if you put the proxy clip on your timeline as opposed to the regular video, like if a regular video is five gigabytes in size, and let's say you have a computer that doesn't have much RAM and is struggling to, to deal with that large file, Camtasia will create a proxy clip of that large video file, and it'll be a fraction of the size. It won't look as good, but it will allow you, in the timeline, it won't look as good, or on the canvas, it won't look as good, but it will allow you to edit the video um, uh, faster without things um, lagging on you. Uh, and then when you render the final video, Camtasia will automatically, they'll, it'll automatically use the real video in the rendering process. So proxy videos are awesome. Um, I haven't worked with a lot of really large clips, but it, it would certainly come in handy, especially if you're dealing with a lot of 4K clips uh, or longer videos, proxy clips uh, are awesome. And you can, you can do it automatically or uh, manually too. If something, if a proxy clip wasn't created automatically, you can right click in your media bin over here, say, um, no, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. I'll have Stream Deck set up next week, I promise. Uh, media. So, yeah, no, in this case, uh, yeah, you, I can show you where it is. So if this were a video file, so this is a recording file, um, uh, a T-Rec file that I recorded from Camtasia. If you right-click any video that you put in here, right, down here you'll see proxy video, create proxy video. Well, let's just do it to this, see what happens. You see that green bar? No, you can't because it's behind me, right there. Okay, let me do that again. Let's delete proxy video. Okay, so right click, come down here. I'm still in the way. It's kind of neat about Ecamm. I can move my myself around. You right click, go down to proxy video, create proxy video. It creates a proxy video, okay? And then you know it's created a proxy video by this orange dot or this orange circle here. And then you can just, you can click, you can drag that down to your timeline. You know, I already have it down here, but um, actually I see it, it, it put the orange circle down here already as well. So editing that would be a lot easier now. And I mean, you can't probably tell, but the quality is not as good as it was initially. But uh, yeah, so proxy videos. Yes, Frank, it's an awesome tip. Um, proxy videos, awesome. Uh, let's see what's next here. Frank says, maybe not the place, but if you ever did a tutorial on titles and text, I would be all over that. I'll make a note of that. Titles and text. Because admittedly, I need to get better at, at that as well. Um, when creating videos, I mean, it's easy to, to pop text up on the screen, but to, to add animation and getting into behaviors and coming up with some custom templates to make it easier to add these things um, uh, can really, uh, really add spice to your video and help with engagement, right? Um, so yeah, absolutely, I can get into that um, with a tutorial and uh, uh, like with a video and then also in a, in a future live stream, 100%. Um, oh, let me see here. See, Frank says, I think the new version has auto proxy. Well, I was wondering because like I, I just mentioned that I think it does it automatically. Well, that's, yeah, it does it automatically, but I, I didn't think it used to do it automatically. And, and I think maybe you're confirming that, <laughs> that you used to have to manually do it. Now it'll do it automatically. And I don't know what makes it do it automatically. If the video has to be above a certain, um, size that, that, you know, the program knows that you want to work with the proxy version instead. I'm not sure, um, but but that's interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so where am I in the? Am I? So I, I went over the hologram, the 3D lighting and shadows we touched on. And if you want more information, by all means, go check out that video that I made yesterday. Um, uh, I, I even left a con like it's cool. And if you. <laughs> If you're bored, you're looking for something to do, watch that video and count how many times I say the word cool. It's a lot. <laughs> I've got one guest in the comments that I've noticed already, and uh, he's not far off. <laughs> uh, you can tell I was getting a little excited with that. I just figured out that like in the week prior. It's like, wow, this is pretty neat. I wonder what kind of video I can make with this. So 
um, that's uh, that's what I did. So yeah, check that out if you want to learn more about the lighting and shadows. And if you have any questions about anything that I did there, I've already got a couple in my own head that I, I could have done differently or I could have sh I could have expanded on. It's already a thirty minute video, so I didn't really want to go longer than that. Um, but in a future video, there are some other directions I can go and uh, and explain other things or do things slightly different differently. Um, so I'll keep that in mind. Angle blinds transition. I will be prepared to go over that next week and look for a video on that before next week's live stream. Also very cool. Neat. Uh, animated flowing lines. We touched on that. Uh, Greg says, if you use proxies when it comes time to export, do they export in the higher quality if publishing to say YouTube? Yes, definitely. That's And that's really the whole point. Um, it uses the higher quality ones. The proxy ones are only used by you in the timeline, and that's the only reason they're created, so you can use them in the timeline um, and, it, and speed up your editing process. Um, uh, the, the real full size files are used when you export it, 100%. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, Pamela says, it was cool, that's why. What was that? The, oh, the 3D lighting and shadow. Oh, yes. The, yes, it was cool. 100%. Thank you for agreeing with me. <laughs> Greg says it exports full quality. Super handy on larger projects. 15 megs and up. 15 minutes and up. Yes. 100%. And Greg says, Frank, super cool. And thank you. See, sometimes I don't have to answer all the questions. <laughs> Frank answered it for you. You guys can talk amongst yourselves. I'm just here to help guide the conversation. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So that's, that's it. So are we, is there anything, is there, if there's anything else you want me to show you, let me know. This is kind of your last chance for today. Um, Frank says, thanks, Rob. I'm glad I caught the tail end of this and had a chance to say hello. Me too. Hello, Frank. I hope to see you around in the future. Um, we do this Every Tuesday, I think this is the third or fourth one in a row since I made the, the conscious decision to make sure I do this every week. It had been sporadic before that. Um, I think I had a few in November, and before that, it was a couple of years, like a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm back into it, and uh, part of the problem was I wasn't sure where this channel should go, and I think I spent too much time worried about that. Like, uh, I, I know where the channel is, is headed now. It's, it's a, a heavy focus on Camtasia, and that's fine. That's the program I know the most. Um, but I'll, I'll continue to, to float out there that if there's anything else about any of this you want to know more about, just let me know, and we can kind of go down that path a little bit. So whether that's um, Ecamm or OBS or uh, Canva or YouTube, like, in general, um, whether it's how to, how to do a good voiceover, uh, how to film yourself, how to get the best looking picture or a video, how to get a blurry background that, you know, notice how much, like the closer I get to the, the camera, the blurrier the background back here gets, or the further away I get, that's all to do with the lens. So if you want more videos on that, how to set up a video set, how to live stream, let me know, cause I'll go through whatever you want to know. Um, it's just that for right now, uh, what seems to be driving things is the Camtasia tech videos. Uh, and I asked early on in the stream, what type of videos do you prefer? Do you like the short ones where I just describe the tools in Camtasia kind of one at a time, like little three, four, five, six minute videos to go over the specific things? Or do you like the longer videos that shows you how you can use these things in real cases, like a case study, kind of like yesterday's video with the lights and shadows. Um, and the feedback that I've gotten so far is kind of a mix. You like both. So, and I was thinking that like in my mind, if I'm releasing three videos in a week, perhaps one is a longer one and two are the shorter ones, something like that. And we can kind of go that way for a bit and uh, see where that takes us. And, uh, uh, see if you like that. And I'll keep an eye on the stats to see which types of videos um, uh, seem to be doing better. And I'll always take your questions in the live stream to see if there's anything else you'd like me to cover um, or if you'd like me to switch directions at all. 
Um, so uh, let me just check the live chat again. Greg says, will you be getting into creating and using custom templates to use as a starting point for projects that may differ from what is currently offered? Uh, sure. Let me write that down. Custom templates. Um, yes, uh, very useful. However, I have to be honest with you, I haven't really used them much myself. And I slap myself on the wrist for that because I know it's a time saver. It's just that I've gotten so used to the way I do things over the years. Um, quite honestly, templates in Camtasia may not have even existed <laughs> when I started. So that's probably the only reason why I haven't really gotten into it. But uh, certainly for things like, um, well, one of the things I want to do is I want to create some templates for you guys uh, to get you started on different types of videos that I can uh, basically upload uh, to my Google Drive or something, and then you guys can download and have a template to start with. I'd like to be able to to give that to you guys at some point. So whether you're you're sharing that with people for that reason, or if you're collaborating, and maybe you're not the only one that works on your videos. Maybe somebody else does, and you want to both be starting from the same template. Well, if you had the same template to start with, that could be helpful. <laughs> or if you make hundreds of the same types of videos right? And you want them all to have the same beginning and ending. A template would make sense. Now, again, all the videos I've been making recently have a very similar intro um, and outro, uh, but I still don't, I don't use a template for that. I could save time if I did, but uh, I also have to spend time to learn to do the templates first. So <laughs> it's a chicken and egg thing, I think. <laughs> but yeah, no, I can definitely get into showing you guys how to use templates and that'd be a good exercise for me too. Um, Frank says, normally, <clears throat> excuse me, normally I'm teaching, but I am catching your content and recommending it. Very good content. Thank you, Frank. Very good. So you're a teacher, um, or you teach. That's, that's good to know. I think a lot of the people who use Camtasia are, uh, teachers in some respect, uh, whether they're at a school or at a company and they present a lot. Camtasia is the perfect software for, for doing things like that. Um, I'll pop a community post on my channel linking to your content. Appreciate that, Frank. Thank you very much. That would be awesome. The more the merrier. <laughs> Greg says uh, to Frank, super idea. I never thought of that, but we'll do so on my channel as well. Thank you, Greg. Awesome. Really appreciate that. My train of thought is that if you're doing videos for different clients, they may require completely different templates. Very good point. Um, yes, and and I do. Uh, so I, I make, I edit videos for clients through Fiverr as well. That's the other thing I do. Um, and I have a lot of repeat clients and they do come back to me. And I'm thinking of one in particular, it's a, it's a chiropractor in the, in the Midwest U S that, uh, uh, they do testimonial videos, right. And, uh, every so often they'll send me um, the raw footage of a new testimony, like a customer, right? Giving their testimonial, but they'll want the same intro and outro background music. Um, all of that, the fonts, titles, questions, title screens, all of that is the same for every video. And I haven't used templates. I should, that would really help with that. But what I do is I will go back to the previous job I did for them, make a copy of that, open up the copy, and then modify it. You know, I'll delete all the old stuff, put in the new stuff, and all of the, the intro, the outro, and the music is all still there. That's kind of the way I've approached that in the past. Um, not, and again, that, was, that's, that probably stems from before templates were even offered in Camtasia. Now, having said that, maybe templates were always offered, <laughs> and I'm putting my foot in my mouth. <laughs> In which case, I apologize, but uh, that's the only reason I could think of for why I haven't used templates. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's how I've done it in the past. Um, but definitely a very good use case uh, for templates. Um, where are we here? Frank says, if you do one video for a client, chances are you'll do two. Yeah, as long as you do a good job in that first one, you're 100% correct. <laughs> but yes, re repeat clients quite often want different. And then every once in a while they may change and say, you know what? I want a fresh new look and then create a new template for that fresh new look and all videos for that new look going forward. Um, 
Yes, very good. So, okay, here's a comment. Oh, here it is. Comment. I see the comments on YouTube and then on Ecamm. Uh, Frank says, nope, templates are new. Well, new is relative. I've been using Camtasia since version 2 or so. Version 2? Wow, that's quite a while ago. I think I remember Camtasia 8 or 7, something like that is when I, when I started. Um, when I, I used it for many years, though, without using it very much. Um, I didn't really get into it, I'm going to say, till about 5 or 6 years ago, I guess. Um, but, yeah, so, okay, relatively new. Good. I've got that marked down to do a video on templates. So, so look for tomorrow's tomorrow's videos on how to do the color wipe, color grading wipe effect. Pretty simple, pretty short video. Um, using Google Drive is another video that's that's uh, already uh, scheduled to come out this week. Um, I may bump it if I get another video made in time, and I may come up with a, another longer use case type video um, by the end of the week. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of look at that once I go off uh off stream here uh to figure out what videos I'm going to make next and uh yeah I probably make make a couple in the next couple of days and uh want to stay ahead of this want to stay I, I always like to have at least two videos ready if I'm going to be able to keep up this three videos a week pace um generally so the last three videos I made well the last one I made came out yesterday that took a day to make that one Right, I did that on Saturday, and then I bumped the, the next two, and I came up with it yesterday. Um, but the la the three before that were all shorter. I did three videos in a day. <clears throat> so now that I have a bit of a system going, uh, I can generally do the shorter ones fairly quickly. Um, so that's what I'll continue to do. But I'd like to get ahead of the curve in case I ever get busy with other things and I can't make the videos uh, when I want to, because I always want to have content for you guys when I say I'm going to have content for you guys. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, oh, we got here. Um, Frank says 2002 ish before it was called studio. Haha. -ha, but that doesn't mean I was good at it. <laughs> Very good. 2002. I think that predates me starting to, uh, it, it was after that, that I started with it. That's, that's, that must be pretty much when they started. <laughs> Frank says you need to duplicate yourself. I did. I did. You need to watch my clone yourself video. I duplicated myself twice. <laughs> oh, you perhaps you know that, and that's why you said that. <laughs> um, that was kind of a fun exercise, too, cloning myself. That's what I'm going to have to do with this hologram video, too. When I do this hologram video here, right here, so you see how I'm waving my finger and I'm behind that? I need to duplicate myself. Put, take the background away from one copy of myself, put it in the foreground. Now my finger is in front of that screen, right? That's what I'm going to do. So just a little heads up. That's on the horizon. Frank says that was a call to do that. That was a call to that. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> that was a fun video to make, the clone yourself video. All right, I think. So next week. Same time, same place, 1 o'clock Eastern. I'll be back here live to go over anything you want to go over. Um, we'll talk about the videos I released, the videos I'm working on, any other questions you guys have after watching this. So some of you may be watching this on the replay. Uh, and if so, you can post comments down below in the comment section. If you're here live, you can post them live and we can interact. But uh, uh, if, if you want to see me come out with a video on anything in particular, um, uh, and you're watching this on the replay, just leave a comment down below, and I will see them, and I'll answer them. And uh, uh, all good ideas get added to the list. How's that? Even some not-so-good ideas, but I'd never tell you your idea is not so good. All your ideas are good. <laughs> uh, and I'll add them to the list, and I'll either include them in the next live stream, or a future live stream, or a future video. Um, so that being said, I think I will... Oh, wait, wait. Wait now, uh, one more comment I've got from Greg. Super fun time today, Rob. Thanks for what you're providing to the community. Looking forward to the next live stream. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, I have a lot of fun doing, this, doing these, and thanks to everybody else who stopped in and watched as well. Um, it was fun, uh, and welcome, Frank, new subscriber, new uh, participant in the live stream. 
uh, like to keep growing this week by week and uh, uh, let's help each other make awesome videos. So uh, until next time, uh, have a fun week, stay safe, and we will see you, I will see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye for now. No. i got to figure out how to end the live stream in Ecamp. <laughs> Here we go. Bye, guys.